Hey guys, this is Miguel. I'm an engineer at Horizon Hobby, and I've been dying to talk about something that I've been working on, and I finally get to. This is the serial telemetry receiver, which a lot of you quad racers have been waiting for. Um, this is the current receiver we sell, the quad racing diversity receiver. This is a normal remote receiver, but these are pretty much the same size, but this one's uncased, and I wanted to show you guys size comparison of the two. So here's the new receiver. And there's the current one. So obviously this has telemetry, it's gonna be a little bigger. Um but not by that much. We can do some exact dimensions. It is about let's see thirty millimeters long. 15 millimeters wide and about 6.5 millimeters thick. You can see the two there, like that. All right, and this is the same thing, but this one has a 3D printed case. Uh, we're not gonna offer this case. This is for people that want to protect it better and they have a 3D printer. We'll post these files online. Um, but most people will probably be taking this and just either using the polycarbonate wrap we'll provide with it or heat shrinking it. Um, so let's get these out of the way. So first let's talk about power because this is going to be different than what you're used to. This takes 5 volts unlike our, not our standard receivers which take 3.3. .3. Um, the actual voltage range for this is 4 to 8.4 volts. You have your, this this goes in on the main port here. You have your power, ground, and signal in that order from left to right. And then we have an extra pin here that isn't being used, but we might use it for something in the future, who knows. And we have the second connector here, which is our voltage, our battery voltage input, and lap timer input. And we'll talk about the lap timer later, but this will auto detect between the two. If you have a battery in there, it'll use that. If not, it'll default into lap timing mode. Um, also, if you don't, if you like making things really compact, we have a standard servo three pin uh, connector here, or rather mounting holes. So you can carefully tear this connector off and solder this straight to a flight controller that has the same three pin uh, connector and I can show you an example of that on my quad here. We got flight controller right here and receiver right above that got some double stick tape there to keep it a little separated. Might get a little better angle from here. Let's get that in there. Right there you can see the three pin connected and soldered straight into that. So it's nice, neat, compact. It's not integrated into flight controller, but it is a close second. All right, let's talk about binding. So this receiver won't have auto bind, but there are three ways to bind it. The first is using this cable that will be included with it. You can put a bind plug on this end and having the other end connected to the flight controller just power it up with the bind plug in it and it'll go into bind mode. You won't want to get rid of this cable right away because it'll also be used to update the receiver since it will be updatable and that'll give us the flexibility of adding new features in the future. Um, so you'll definitely want to have one of these cables handy because I know a lot of you guys are probably just going to cut this off and solder it straight to the flight controller, but having at least one backup cable to be able to plug into your receivers and update them would be useful. Um, so the bind plug is the first way to bind it. The second is a new way that is going to be supported on flight controllers that support serial telemetry. In this case, race flight is going to be the first one to support it. Um, but you'll go to your configuration tab and we have a bind button here you press that and it'll send a 
Oh, hold on. They have bad contacts here. I need to like move those pins around. But yeah, you uh, press the bind button and it'll send a serial command similar to when it sends telemetry back, but it'll tell it to go into bind mode. So that won't require a reboot or anything, but you'll still have to have go through the configurator. And then the last method is using the spectrum sat bind parameter in the CLI, which some of you might already be familiar with, but that's the more tedious one. Uh, of course, it will at least be compatible for the flight controllers that don't currently support serial telemetry. All right, let's talk about telemetry. So ideally, this receiver will get all of its data from the flight controller, and that way you won't even have to use a second connector for voltage or lap timing or whatever. All you have is these three wires, and that's it, nothing else. So I have a quadcopter here that's already with the receiver in it, and it has the current sensor as well. Let's bring my transmitter over. So I have my telemetry set up already. We can go to, you can see voltage here, and you'll have your flight log as well for those of you that are already familiar with uh, spectrum telemetry or flight log. And we have current consumption. I have a current sensor on here that's plugged into the flight controller and that's passing that through to the receiver. So we can arm it there, throttle up and see the changes. Capacity consumption. So we've got that working. We have uh, custom user fields. So if flight controller developers want to send uh, their own variables or something to the transmitter, they don't need to change the transmitter code there are uh, ways of them sending the data which we will have documents available publicly for use and um, you can also send text so if you want to um, do some kind of interface like stick programming where you want to be able to change the PIDs or something like that uh, the flight controller would be completely in control of that this is just feedback so the user can see um, and the flight controller obviously would be in control of that but you could do PID tuning, um, whatever it is, but this is basically just text that the flight controller sends through it. And finally, we have our new lap timer feature, which is probably what I'm the most excited about with this receiver. Um, so right now, I don't have a sensor on this quad, but the lap timing works with a button as well. Oh, actually, let me put the volume up. So that will count laps, and I have a clip that I can show you actually using it. Alright, here I'm going to demonstrate the new lap timing feature on the transmitter using telemetry to trigger the timing. So no switches or anything like that to time yourself, just fly through the gate. Um, let's hope I don't crash. I'll try to fly till I crash or run out of battery. Stunt five. 26.80. Milliamp hours, twenty seconds, twenty four point eight eight ten nine eight seven six five four three 
Light pack, 1,000 milliamp hours, 2, 1, 0. All right, so there the race time ran out, and it looks like my battery is low, so I'll just finish this last lap. And turn that alarm off. All right, I didn't crash, made all six laps. So that's the lap timing with the new telemetry receiver. So for the lap timing, we'll have more details later on, but it'll basically be a sensor you can plug into this port for those of you that might have flight controllers that don't support serial telemetry right off the bat. Um, and it'll be very, it'll be a lot simpler than doing ILAP setup, including the transmitter setup, setting up the gates, and it's not going to cost as much. It'll be much cheaper than having to set up an ILAP system. Um, but we'll have more details on that later. So that wraps this up for the serial telemetry receiver. If you guys have any questions or concerns, just uh, let me know in the comments.